Hello, everybody. My name is Mirvat Al Asnaj. I'm an interventional cardiologist and I'm working for PCR Online. And we're here at TCT 2023. With me is Sushil Kudari, who is going to discuss with us today the TriSEN2 trial that's uh, presented as a late breaker at TCT. Sushil, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Fantastic. Well, thank you for being with us today. And, you know, just as a segue to um, tricuspid transcatheter interventions, the repair you know, whether it was with the tri-clip or dedicated clips and so on, the results have been fairly mediocre. And I think um, many of us find it, a, we don't have a solution for this uh, actually growing population of patients. Could you just describe the TriSEN2 the tri trial for us very briefly? So, so the TriSEN2 trial is investigating transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement with the uh, Edwards Evoke uh, system. The Evoke system is a uh, a bovine pericardial tissue valve that's housed inside a nitinol self-expanding frame. There are three sizes to the valve from 44 to 52 millimeters. All are delivered via a, a 28 French uh, a transvenous delivery system. So we had done an initial EFS study with you know close to 200 patients, and this is Trisen 2 is the pivotal trial for approval. Um, it's got a little bit of a novel trial design. Uh, it's a two-part trial design because the Evoke system got FDA breakthrough designation. And breakthrough designation is sort of designed to allow earlier access to therapies that uh, for diseases that don't have an easy treatment option. Um, and so the FDA sort of with this designation sort of ex accepts some risk, um, but, but pro and, you know, by, uh, in, in, in the hopes of providing earlier access. So the two-part design and what we're presenting at TCT is the first 150 patients. The, this two-part design allows us an earlier look at some safety endpoints at 30 days and, and some limited effectives, effectiveness endpoints at six months in that first 150. But, we, it, but it also limits us in terms of looking at the long-term outcomes such as mortality and heart failure or hospitalization until the entire cohort is enrolled and reaches that, that stage. So at this point, the full cohort is enrolled, um, all 400 patients. Um, Follow-up is ongoing, and we'll get those results later. But right now, what we have is the first 150. And the way the trial is designed is patients that have symptomatic severe TR despite optimal medical therapy uh, uh, are randomized two to one to either receive evoke or continue on optimal medical therapy. And then we have follow-up at three months, six months, and one year. And so... The primary safety endpoint is a composite of major adverse events at 30 days. Um, and, the, and the effectiveness endpoints that, that we're looking at at six months, the first is TR reduction to moderate or less. And the second is a composite uh, of functional status and improvements and looks at a, a hierarchical composite, including KCCQ, NYHA, um, and six minute walk distance. I mean, the, the preliminary results are actually very promising for a very sick population um, that you actually enrolled in. Uh, congratulations, a very large number of women were also enrolled in this trial. Um, can you give us a little bit more about the demographics of the patients that were enrolled in TriSEN2? Sure. I mean, you, you raised the point. It, it's an elderly comorbid population. Um, mean age was 79. You know, the majority were female, I think uh, nearly three quarters, very symptomatic. You know, three quarters were NHA class three or four. They had very uh, poor baseline status. The mean KCCQ was less than 50. Um, they almost all had AFib, you know, 20% had ascites. So a very sick population. And one important difference from some of the tier studies is more than a third had a pre-existing pacemaker or ICD, which is a limitation for some of these current repair therapies. And in, in terms of the baseline TR, it, it was significant and, you know, it, it was massive or torrential in more than 50%. And, and I think one of the theoretical advantages of replacement is that, you know, one of the limitations of edge to edge is large gaps and really torrential TR. And with replacement, some of those limitations are not always there. And so what are the most important um, results that came out of this first 150 patients that you want to tell us about? So in terms of basic, obviously the importance is procedural characteristics. The valve was successfully implanted in you know, all, all but four patients, so 96%. 
Um, it was it, the procedure time was 115 minutes. The mean uh, device time was 65 minutes with sort of relatively narrow confidence interval. So sort of a reproducible procedure. Um, there, there were some events. Um, there were two patients that needed uh, urgent cardiac surgery to uh, repair RV injury. Uh, and so that's important to, to keep in mind. And, and those were related to the wire. Both patients had successful repair and had the evoke valve left in place. Um, and, and also what's important is the median length of stay was four days, but more than 90% of patients were discharged to home. Um, which, which for this elderly comorbid population, that's that's an important sort of thing to note. In terms of the adverse events at, at 30 days, the ma majority were related to bleeding, which occurred in about 10%, and then arrhythmias requiring a pacemaker. So if you take out the patients that had a pre-existing pacemaker, the new pacemaker rate was around 22%. So not, not trivial. In addition, there were three cardiovascular mortalities at 30 days. In terms of effectiveness, it, it, it did the job. I mean, it eliminated, nearly eliminated TR in the majority of patients. Um, you know, 98.8% got to moderate or less. The one patient that had severe was a patient that had an aborted procedure. I mentioned there were four aborted procedures due to sort of anatomic or imaging challenges. And so, but 98.8% had moderate, but importantly, 93.8% had less than mild, mild or less. You know, and so this was obviously dramatically different, you know, between the optimal medical therapy and evoke. It 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 compared to optimal medical therapy, it effectively eliminated uh, TR. And then in terms of the uh, hierarchical effectiveness endpoint, you know, this was compared as a as it was a composite of, as I said, KCCQ, NYHA, and six minute walk distance. Uh, it was analyzed using Finkelstein Schoenfeld uh, method, and showed that patients that got treated with evoke at six months had improved. Uh, functional outcomes, you know, with a highly significant p-value of less than 0 0.001. But, you know, th that's obviously just a p-value. So we also, like they did in, in Triluminate, calculate a win ratio. Um, and, you know, the win ratio is, is doing these pairwise comparisons with every patient to in, in evoke to every patient in, in optimal medical therapy. And using the win ratio, uh, you know, looking at uh, evoke, the win ratio over optimal medical therapy was 4.6. So a significant magnitude of effect. And, you know, this is a small cohort to start, but each component, KCCQ, at six months, uh, patients with Evoke had a 21-point improvement compared to 3.7 in the medical therapy arm. Um, the, the magnitude of improvement in KCCQ is fairly dramatic. 50% of patients had more than a 20-point improvement. There, was, there were improvements in NYHA, and uh, and and six-minute walk distance is a, is a challenging test. You know, the difference at six months between the two groups was 30 meters approximately. The evoke arm improved 10 meters, but the medical therapy arm decreased 20, small cohort, big confidence intervals. So we'll, we'll have to see, but the directional change of every component was in favor of uh, evoke. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing those with us. Um, I think, you know, considering that this was the learning curve and the first 150 uh, we'd like to see sustained results in the remaining patients that were enrolled and perhaps by then um, some learning in terms of procedural success. Um, you know, just one thing is about patient selections, finding the most symptomatic patients, having the heart team on board, um, and the imagers, of course, that help us. And perhaps with time, the technology itself can be further refined. You know, would a jugular access be better than ephemeral access? That's something for the future. But at least um, it's giving us an option where repair hasn't worked in the past. So thank you for being with us and we're excited to see um, the final publication when it does uh, come out.